Hello and welcome to day one of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. It's 29.53 in-game. It's Alien Day. Lots of alien manufacturers. And that means there's going to be something new from Gatak. And maybe some other stuff as well. I'm here with the lovely Zinnia, who's wearing tiny little shorts and an <laughs> IAE t-shirt. How are you doing, Zin? You right? Uh, I'm good, thanks. Um, I'm, I forgot pants. Yeah, you forgot, <laughs> forgot your pants. It's okay. It's, they look like little shorts. It's fine. Uh, we're gonna have a run round. Oh, we can see behind. You can see the Gatak. You can see the Gatak um, Sulen behind me. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look at the stuff. Stay, stay one. Ah! Uh, and it's all in this main hall. Uh, there is some stuff underneath. So we'll look at the main hall and then we'll jump down into the Hollow Suite. Uh, right. So someone was running through earlier with the Wow Blast um, weapons. Oh, I was gonna say steal it, that guy's uh, that girl's hat. She dropped the the really the the concierge hat a second ago. Oh, no, I think she picked it up. So they were smirked. Um, so we've got alien ships. Now some of these alien ships are pretty rare. Um, they've got alien tax on them if you buy them with real money. So alien tax is basically they charge more real money for them because they're supposed to be rarer in game, and I suppose the in game pl prices are also reflected by that. But we've got the Banu Defender over here. I'm not a fan of the Banu Defender. It it looks like a crab. Where have you gone, Sin? Where are you? I'm right here. I don't, oh. Just trust me, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be invisible. I think it just looks like a crab going rom. Yeah. I, I've not seen many of them either, like when flying about. No, it's sort of like a... It's kind of a medium fighter, but it's long range. So it's like an escort fighter thing. It's going to have some ability to... Um, sort of dock with the, the Banu Merchantman maybe better than other ships could, stuff like that. There might be like a specific special little dock for it or something. But uh, basically two people can fly it together. It, it's, it's an odd ship. It's a unique ship. It's alien. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm super super into them. But inside's sort of like a, a sea creature. Uh, oh, yeah. Sort of, they're, they're cool. I don't think I've ever actually been in one before. Well, yeah, they're not super popular. We'll see them like being flown by the Banu eventually, uh, a lot. So, um, but that, that one very much is for humans and Banu to fly. Uh, then we've got the old style glaive, which is going to get updated when Squadron Forty Two is released. It's basically the Bandu, Bandu, the Vandal, sort of medium fighter. It, it's sort of veteran medium. Some people say it's heavy, but it's not really heavy. It's it's more well armed than the scythe and better armoured than the scythe but it isn't really a heavy fighter um, but I'm more interested in that once it becomes uh, the sort of new version but I suppose if you old, buy the old version you'll get the new version when the new version comes out then you've got the Prowler which is a Esperia ship but basically Tavaran have you played much around with the Prowler before? Nope, never seen it like You've never Oh, wow. Up close. So, ha okay. Have a look inside because it's basically a, a scary red bird's nest. <laughs> I've um, seen the, the the like video of it. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a it's a stealthy-ish, quiet dropship that uses like gravlev to fly around, and you can deploy marines out of it really simply and easily because there are force fields on these like little doors, so you can have it sort of pressurized but have all the doors open. Is the idea? Mm. Um, but yeah, dropship. I don't like it. I like the way it looks on the exterior. I wouldn't want to be a, a marine inside. I feel like I get a headache. Like it just—it just feels red and angry. The Tavaran ships and all of the alien ships have got a very unique, cool look uh, about them. But yeah, it's sort of like the branches of a tree, like you're a bird, or, or like a bird's nest. And it's the sort of feel for the Tavaran stuff. And so yeah, if you're into a dropship, go check that out. I, I think we probably better check out the <laughs> new ship here. So this is the Gatak Sulen. It is... I'm not sure if it's got cargo space, but I suppose I'll have a look at that in a second. Um, are you trying to work out how to get in? No, is that just a landing foot? Yes, yes. Is that all it is? Because it looks so, very complex for a landing foot. So I believe there's a load of manoeuvring thrusters on it as well, because it will fold right. inwards or fold upwards. Um, the, so the ship it literally is landed on its bum rather than its belly. And you can access, as you're doing now, the side of the ship to, for entry. 
and there's grav lev tech, so literally the side of the wall comes down into stairs. And the ship is built vertically. So very tiny little rooms. Hmm. Um, if you want to go up a level. Oh, sorry. I'm sure you want to leave. Go on, you can leave. Oh. Uh, what is... So, so this was actually what I was trying to work out when, you know, you said, oh, there's that, that badge. Oh, yeah, the button. Yeah. So it's it's basically a button. I was trying to translate it. And I, I think couldn't it's, translate it. I think it's use. <laughs> I think it's just basically use. <laughs> it's use. It's very simple. So downstairs on the on the ground floor, first floor if you're an American and, and are wrong about the floors, um, the, the ground floor has a little suit locker or armor locker and uh, a little armory. So you can put weaponry in there. And if we go up to... Boop. Middle floor. Oh. Can we fit two people on the lift? Can you interact with the button? Because I, I can't. Oh. No. <laughs> no, yes. no, you made it. You made it. You both, clipped through for it. a second there for me. So this is sort of like habitation area. Now, Sin. Hmm. Where's the toilet here? <laughs> I know because I've watched the video. Oh, no. You smirk. So you got the toilet. But, <laughs> oh, what if you want to wash your hands? Maybe you'd use the sink. No, that's the Xi'an poop sink. But that's where they poop. <laughs> the Xi'an poop that's, sink. That's where they poop, apparently. Oh. There's some cool stuff going on in these sh ships. Like, they, they are very unique. They are alien. Uh, I don't know what that opens or does. Was that Did that little bench come out because of that? It did. I, I can't open the door now. Do you want me to open the door for you? <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. You might be stuck in there. This this guy's uh, coming along to help. Uh, I'm stuck. Oh my god, I'm stuck in the bathroom. Uh, so, did you press the lock button or something? I don't know. Is there a lock button? Maybe. So, there's you see the little triangle on it? Yeah. So, you might be able to... It is a little triangle. Yeah, yeah, there's... There's lots of little edges of the triangle, yeah, corners of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I think actually get out, it's get out, the, get out. The, the bottom. Less talk, more out. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't think you can do it. So on the inside, if, if just quickly, trust me. Yeah, yeah. On the inside, if you look at the button that controls the door, at the bottom, there's actually an extra button. So I think that's the lock button. You can button. lock it. Oh, right, let's go up. Let's go upstairs. Okay. Uh, yes. Oh my god, we both made it. And then you've got the cockpit, which is a, a sort of built to be like a cathedral. It looks really cool with the IAE above, right? Mm-hmm. And Zin is going to go back to her people. See you, Zin. Bye. It's Flight of the navigator isn't it? It really is. Yeah. But I think that, as I say, they, they never mention it, but I do feel like that's what they're going with, with the whole... um. Oh, the camera angle is weird. Yeah, so it's 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 awkward, right? Because you're flying, you're going to be flying literal true VTOL straight up yeah. when you use it. Um, but yeah, a cool ship. For sure. Can I force you to come back Let's down? Let's get out. hope I don't squish you. And then I'll, oh, that's a good point. I will move backwards. Wow, you get catapulted downwards. <laughs> oh! Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, get up. We're all oh up God. here now. This, this right. ship is not big enough. For... Oh, bye bye. I'm going. She's... I'm going in the pilot seat. Quick. <laughs> have a quick look at the. Oh wow. You've got to be prepared for that, haven't you? So. Even even the camera doesn't like it's in. Yeah. That's weird. But it is a very cool ship. I'm going like to get out of here before I die. Engravings and stuff on it. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. But yeah, that's the, the Gatak Roland. No, it's not. It's the Gatak uh, Sulen. Sulen. Right. I've just had to turn off VoIP because of some uh, spicy and disruptive people. Um, they really, really wanted to get into the Sulen. 
Right, where have you gone? You've gone over here. The Talon. Two. The Talon. So, we've got the Talon and the Talon Shrike. So, these are Tavaran sort of humanized ships. And they are very much sort of like um, assault strike um, dive craft. Sort of like you dive towards a target, shoot it a lot, and then get out. Uh, the Talon uses conventional weaponry, and the Shrike uses loads and loads of missiles. Uh, they're sort of supposed to have like hardened shields at the front, and then I think you can switch it to the rear when you're running away. Um, but yeah, very cool idea for a light fighter. Um, you can see that there's no obvious way of viewing out. It uses cameras and that sort of stuff, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's a very cool ship. Very much like them. I like their iridescent sort of skins. Then you've got the uh, another Xi'an ship here, the Cartoon Owl. Xi'an light fighter. Waiting for the Santok Yai, which will be in 3.22 by the end of the year. At least that's the hope. Um, sort of, we, we know these are going to get updated to be very interesting, like strafing and uh, with the new sort of um, flight model coming out, these will fly very different compared to other ships. And then you've got yourself a Vandal Blade. And the Blade is sort of like one of the more updated Vandal ships. Um, it's a light fighter. It's supposed to like, the blades here, I believe are supposed to be for ramming and for breaking off and stuff. Um, is the idea. Be interesting to see how that works with the new systems that CIG have got planned. Uh, with, what is the system called? The destruction system. Maelstrom. Maelstrom. Oh, Zin, Zin is... <laughs> T-posed in his way in there! Oh, wow. Oh, you T-posed when you got in. That's amazing. Well, if you notice when you play Arena Commander, mm. the Vandal Swarm ones, the pilots actually just T-pose in the canopy, like out of the canopy. Oh, perfect. For, for the Vandal so. ships. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will That's be replaced great. with actual Vandal at some point. There you go. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, oh. I think they need to fix the animation for that, don't yes, they? Yes, yes. You're supposed to get it like it's uh, like a Akira like bike type thing. Or... Yeah, mo bike, sports bike. I say Akira like bike. No, because you you sit down in the in the bike in Akira. Uh, I think that's a common common misconception. Let's have a look downstairs. Uh, in the sort of hollow suite and vehicle area. Because I, I was expecting more than just the Datak Sulen today. Um, well, you're in for a treat. We've got, we've got some Noxes. Oh no, they're not. They're not the uh, origin. Of course they're not. No, no, no. They're not the X1s. But I suppose the X1s are going to be pretty similar to the Noxes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, cool little Nox. Fits in lots of vehicles. It's quite, quite good fun. Got anything else on the other side before we run into the... Uh, no, we don't. We don't have anything on the other side. Just a little okay. seating area. Let's have a look. Which which way? Left, right, or right to left? Uh, uh, right to left. Right to left. Oh, controversial. Mhm. Mm okay, so I'm assuming that's the Gatak Rylan. Yeah. So, uh, basically, very similar to the Sulen, but it's the cargo, um, sort of medium cargo ship. Lots of cargo on the exterior, so for mm. easy and quick loading, unloading. Is the idea, but the cargo might be a bit vulnerable. Um, it's got a load of big old guns. Yeah. That's a good point. Is that going to land? Because I've only seen pictures of it on its belly. I'm assuming it just lands on its belly. I I th believe that this one lands on its belly as well, not on its bum. Mm. Um, the Sulen, really interesting if we're going to fly it, because it's um, it's dis disorientates you. But I suppose once you fly it a couple of times, you get used to that way of flying, right? Mm. Landing and, and stuff. All right. So all this stuff should be available to buy, and we'll have a look at it. Oh, it's the it's the Bannon Merchant Mon. Um. So we know that Clan Imperium basically stopped development of this. Uh, to they they were developing it for a while, but they wanted to focus more of the team on finishing Squadron Forty Two and RSI ships. And we know that the RSI Polaris will be in our hands within the year, within a year. Um, and that they're going to be working on the Perseus and the Galaxy um, and potentially like the Apollo and stuff like that uh, potentially at the same time and we don't 100% know yet we're waiting for Clan Imperium to um, work out their schedules for next year but um, 
I'm sad that the Bandit Merchantman's not going to be in our hands anytime soon. But it's a giant sort of freight and cargo and sales shopping center bazaar ship that has lots of little shops on that you can um, put different inventories in. It's got big old cargo bay. It's got big old guns. It's got a little dock. Um, and it's very Banu. It's a, it's a focused Banu ship. It's got like a little Banu altar and things like that. Um, what, what do you think of this sort of like the Banu match? Or is it not, like, not a ship that appeals to you? It's not a ship that appeals to me. I don't I don't see the uh, the, the hype about it. I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, if you're not into sort of trade ships, because it's more of a trade ship than a cargo ship. Mm. It sort of does both. Then you're not going to be into that uh, as much. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Pioneer. Uh, base building for me. Like, oh, that's that's kind of exciting. And now we've got the Santok Yai, which is the Xi'an medium fighter. We're expecting this to come out in 3.22 by the end of the year. Oh. Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't actually on display rather than just a hologram. Me too, because I'd expect the exterior to be pretty ready, right? Yeah. Um, if you come over here, Sin. Yeah. Does this screen say anything to you? Screen disconnected. Huh. Weird. Does the other one say anything, or is that also disconnected? Also disconnected. Hmm. Now, I, I saw some flyers around that people were saying that distributed by Xeno Threat, saying they were trying to hack the event, and so, like, basically saying alien ship takeover and stuff like that. Don't don't trust your your sort of lives in the hands of aliens. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't like aliens, do they? They're not. They're not a fan. They're not. Xeno friends, are they? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very different organisation. But that's it from day one at the IAE. Zin and I will be um, grabbing a load of ships to rent and then trying them out probably over the next couple of days. And every day at 4pm a new manufacturer takes the expo hall. So check out day two. Uh, and I'm going to go out and uh, have a look at the website and see what's actually available to buy. Ooh. Good luck, so, have fun. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining me, Sin, in your lovely little right. shorts and uh, IA t-shirt. There's, there's, there's an more. Argo cargo. There's more at the expo hall that I didn't realise. So, a little cargo section. Since before the formation of the UEE, the Interstellar Transport Guild has been the lifeblood of humanity's expansion across the stars, building our empire one cargo delivery at a time. Interesting. So we know that this is going to be basically... Um, the Interstellar Transport Guild is going to be a place you get loads of hauling missions and, and that sort of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we know that there's going to be big cargo containers oh, that you can buy and put this, stuff is in. Is this going to be one of those pushable, like, cargo thing? Hover, cargo. Where's the hover? Oh, yeah, the hover trolleys. Yes, it is. So you've got hover trolleys. Um, you've got the gravity tools. Tools for the trade. You're one of the vehicles that carry the cargo. Haulers use a variety of tools and gadgets to facilitate their work. None are more recognisable than the ubiquitous, ubiquitous tractor beam employed by either a specialised device or a multi-tool attachment. And you've got the um, specialised devices here. The standalone big tractor beams. Oh, this is a cool little area. A secret world of logistics. Beyond making deliveries, cargo hauling often involves deep strategic work that the public never sees, from planning routes to arranging cargo grids to organising ground to space vehicle transfers. Hauling is a career that is both physically and mentally engaging. I mean, is it though? Is it mentally engaging? I suppose it is for <laughs> your profits, right? I suppose they want it to be mentally engaging with you stacking stuff. So having to think about how you stack and how you load and unload. In 2950, Independent Spectrum Survey, cargo hauling was voted as one of the best careers in the verse. One of the main reasons cited, travel. As a cargo hauler, you get to earn a great living while visiting distant worlds, dream destinations, and beyond. You really liked those um, hauling games, didn't you? Like the, the train sim and, hmm, and Euro yeah. truck sim and stuff like that. Monkey. Yeah? I'm cargo. Oh, Look at it, me, I'm cargo. I, oh, I can't be forklifted. You, you're, you are cargo sin. Good job. <laughs> I hope we get um, hope we get forklifts. Okay, that's kind of cool. Cool little cargo section. 
It's, it's new. It's nice. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um. What of the cargo? It's usually shipped in a box, but not all boxes are made the same. Not only do they range in scale and size, but some are specifically designed to handle more exotic or unstable materials like refined containium. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping the cargo overhaul allows us to sort of experience cargo in a more interesting way. I can't jump up there, can I? Because there is a green button up there. Yeah. Must press button. Um, I like button. Cargo haulers across the verse one trip at a time. Or across the verse one trip at a time. Delivering resources that are essential to the Empire's continued prosperity and the livelihoods of trillions of people. And thanks to the Interstellar Transport Guild advocating for the rights of haulers everywhere since 2020... 2391, members can expect proper compensation for their work. Interested in hauling? Learn how you can start today. Okay. Cargo hauling. Well, um, we'll have a quick look around to see if there's any other little hit hidey hole sections like this. <laughs> Zin has also found a mining section on the other side of the hall. She is uh, happy about the prospect of floating there. Oh yeah, that's cool! It's, it's nice. I like these little... Dioramas? Yeah. I, I don't know. Whatever Seems they are. Dioramas. Yeah, di dioramas mm. pretty accurate. Mine without limits. Extract resources on alien planets. Look at this. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I really like that. What I want to do is try and get in there and just, just crouch and go AFK. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's actually technically a ship. What, that? Yeah. It's probably just a model. Or it'll be disabled in some way. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's some cool stuff here. You've got the mining gadgets, you've got the prospector. Uh, getting hands on. Some miners love getting their hands dirty by employing various gadgets and devices from handheld mining lasers, ideal for caves and other hard to access locations, to gadgets that, when attached to deposits, make cracking them open, uh, cracking them open easier. Miners that utilize this vast array of tools will reap the rewards of their handiwork. Oh, cool. What oh, I can, I, can, I can go AFK here. Can you pretend you're being mined? I'm being mined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the laser's going into you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you slash sit? We're being monstrous. How do you type? Uh, F12 to bring it up and enter. Mining takes more than might. Every deposit is different and a wide range of factors including mass, instability, resistance must be considered to avoid catastrophic explosions. And while technology helps assess this important information, many Mining. Many love mining because it requires a strategic plan and skillful, steady hand to get the job done right. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Lots of different valuable materials. Mining matters, refining the future. They just, I, I just like the sort of like the careers for them. What a cool little exhibit. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the little additions, the little extras there. Um, pretty sure we have exhausted them now. But maybe there's going to be more in the coming days with different um, sort of roles talked about. I like this. It's a nice uh, introduction to some of the... Um, Careers and roles, yeah. The, yeah, the, the people you can do jobs for, essentially, in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's available today on the RSA website? So Alien Day, Gatak to start with. Let's have a look. Uh, known for its knowledge-driven approach to ship design and commitment to pushing the envelope while remaining reverent of tradition, Gatak Manufacture debuts its most accessible human hybrid yet at the IAE 2953. So the Sulen. Um, so this ship is available from 65 to $70. I believe it's also available as a starter pack for just a couple more dollars beyond that. So like $70, $70 dollars or something like that. Um, some of the prices you'll see from me are going to have VAT included. I pay 20% extra VAT because I'm in the UK. It's un unfortunate for the purchase of digital spaceships, but it is what it is. Now the Sulen with the Sulen Gatak brings the elegance and focus of Xi'an tech 
tech and design principles to a much wider human audience, creating a truly accessible and versatile ship, perfect for human pilots looking to get started in the world of alien spacecraft. Um, so what we got here... Oh, okay. So I heard they were making some programs, so little, literal little leaflet books. I want to get this printed. Obviously, um, might lose something with the digital uh, aspect, but um, that's kind of cool. So we've got the, you find it at the Tobin Expo Center on your Babbage, uh, at, um, in Microtech. You've got the uh, event guide there, and you've got day one, and obviously full out, um, as we go through day two and all that. Um, got the alien invasion at the IAE, looking at all the manufacturers, and you can um, bring up more information about them. Cool little interactive uh, magazine. And then you've got the Sulen notes, uh, some cool little ads, uh, which you can click on as well. Oh, that's cool. That takes you to subscriber promotions. Um, well, that one doesn't, where does that take you? Nowhere. Oh, that's a cool little magazine. Uh, so, uh, Alien Shipwise um, from Gatak, we've got the Raylan, which is in concept at the moment. Um, $225. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that's including VAT. And then you've got the Sulen, $70. I think it's 65 War Bond. Um, and we'll have to switch over to Aopoa, see what else is available. So we've got the Kartu Al from Aopoa. Um, again, it is a Xi'an ship. Um, it's sort of that light fighter. $170, really overly alien taxed um, there. So alien tax basically adding to the rarity of a ship by making it expensive to buy. Get it in game. Um, got the Nox, the little sort of hybrid hover bikes uh, from $45. The Santok Yai concept, but coming out in 3.22 real soon. Um, it's... $220. There is a special um, upgrade offer for Warbond offer today on that as well, if you are interested. Uh, let's have a quick look at that uh, upgrade now. Um, all ships. No. no, it doesn't doesn't want to load that up for me because um, it hates me. I might not be logged into any specific account, that's why. Uh, and then we've got... Anything else underneath it? Yeah, so the 10-year insurance war bond upgrade if you want to upgrade one of your ships um, slightly more cheaply to a Santok Yai than you can. Um, if you're in love with the ship, it might not be an awful idea. What we got from Banu? Well, I suspect we've got the beautiful Merchantman. Is that what you're going to show me to start with? No, you're going to show me the Crab. And we've got the Banu Defender, $220. Again, really expensive for what it is. Um, <laughs> then, then brings up a $650 ship. Got the Merchantman. A lot of people are really, really hyped by that ship. It's not... It's not limited hull sail or anything like that. A limited hull start tomorrow. I think we can get the um, Javelin and the Idris tomorrow um, in, in three waves, starting at 4 p.m. UTC, then at midnight UTC, and then at 8 a.m. UTC. Um, very, very limited waves of those ships, so sort of bear that in mind. Um, can we buy the Idris K-Pack? Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. But um, today, you can grab yourself a Banu Merchantman if you want. It's going to be a while before it is in your hands, though. Uh, so bear that in mind. And then from Asperia... What have we got from Asperia? What you got? Uh, you've got the Vandal Blade. Um, obviously humanized, so it's not a captured blade. It's a humanized blade built as a replica. Uh, $275. Super alien tax on that one. And you've got the Glaive, $350. I think you can get the Glaive as a referral bonus. Um, so that's pretty useful. Um, if you can get up to a Glaive, which I think is 75 or 150 referrals. Might be out of the reach of most mortals, but um, some people are going to be able to do it. And then you can have a ship that valuable to then upgrade to something else if you wanted. But we are getting the different Glaive in the future. So bear that in mind, it will be updated to the new Vandal Glaive. We've got the Prowler. Um, that is that cool little drop ship. Um, if you're into Tavar and stuff. Uh, you've got the Talon, um, which is the sort of um, dive assault fighter for light, but um, lots of armaments, lots of pew pew pew. $115 there. $115 for the Shrike as well, which is the uh, missile variant. And it goes back to the Blade. And yeah, that's it for day one of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. I suspect we could actually have a quick look at the Gatak page as well for the Sulen. Um, so, okay, it's got a little cool. So, yeah, very much a ship that is 
on its on its bum pointing upwards um, and that's how it takes off and lands so it's going to take a little while to of getting used to that for sure um, I might chuck the video in on this video as well so you can see it but yeah I think it's certainly a cool starter ship for sure um, and if you're into that sort of thing then maybe grabbing it for $65, $70 um, or as a got six SU cargo space. Okay. Three size three weapons, as we expected. Two size one shields. So it's not hugely tanky. One crew. A single seater. Twelve size two missiles. That's quite a lot of missile. That's quite a lot of missile. So, oh, ten years insurance on the ship, whether you buy it, um, if you buy it um, with store credit, and then if obviously if you buy it with uh, real monies, then you have it with uh, lifetime insurance, I believe. Uh you can see this with the 20% extra VAT that I pay, but um, I think it's like 72.50 for a starter pack. That gives comes with a game package. That might be suitable for some people that want to start the, the Star Citizen experience with that ship. Um, although you can get cheaper ships, second tier starter ships, and starter ships like the um, Titan, Avenger Titan, and, and now the Sulen um, might be viable for you and might be something that you are interested in. But yeah. Tell me what you're interested in ship-wise today, if any, um, from the IAE. Are we excited by anything? Uh, are you liking the fact that the, technically the, the Storm was released today as well? Well, actually, in 3.21.1, um, the Sulen is available to uh, fly immediately as well. We're getting the Storm AA uh, on the Tumbrel Day. That will be released as well, so you'll be able to get involved with that. And um, the C1 Spirit came out too, but uh, there's... Lots of other stuff that potentially might happen during the IAE. Other ships and vehicles might become available and other concepts and things. So tell me what you think about all that in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching. Very much appreciated. And we'll be back tomorrow with more IAE. Do you like using your eye holes for extra immersion in Star Citizen and help aim and do some cool stuff? Well, you can with Toby Eye Track 5, which is on sale at the moment. This gives you native high precision head and eye tracking in Star Citizen. Very cool for general immersion, for combat, both in ship or on foot. They are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit, and both Zinn and I have one. Use the links below to grab one or to find out more. What is best in life? To crush your enemies? To see them driven before you? And to hear the lamentations of their women? No, of course not. It's NordVPN. I never saw Conan the Barbarian checking his bank balance and then watching some cool shows on Netflix, all while protecting his privacy and being super secure. To be honest, I can't even remember Conan wearing a shirt. Silly Conan. And now, a big old snake god's got your internet history. Good job. Don't be a Conan the Barbarian. Check out NordVPN. Links below for powerful discounts too. Every month we've been giving away a ship for Star Citizen, but for November, to celebrate the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2953, we are giving away a load of different ships, each to a different person. The Avenger Titan, the Drake Cutter, the C8X Pisces, the Mustang Alpha, and the Nomad. All great starter ships, but also useful for any fleet. They all come with a game package and lifetime insurance. That's all you need to start playing Star Citizen. That's five prizes and five chances to win. Just comment on any of my videos made during November to be in for a chance of winning. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that goes the extra mile in supporting the channel via Patreon or the join button under my videos and then becoming a channel member. Please consider joining those fabulous people as well. It allows us to make daily content for Star Citizen and Squadron 42, delving into all the news, drama, development info, and gameplay that these games have to offer. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the verse.